Hello everybody, this is Lorraine from Canada. I have a Verbling class for you at the intermediate level. This class is called Diplomatic Language and we're going to learn some uh, words and phrases that can help um, soften language so that it does not sound abrupt. This is very important in business situations. And so we'll greet people as they come in. We have Maria. Hello. How are you, Maria? Hello. I'm fine, thank you. And you? Very good. I'm very good, thank you. Uh, Maria, remind me, where are you from? I'm from Portugal. From Portugal, okay. Uh, it's very noisy in your background, Maria. Can you mute your microphone yes, when you yes. are not speaking? Thank you. Okay. Nice to meet you. And Geraldine? Am I saying your name correctly? Yes, yes. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the class. Where are you from, Geraldine? Um, I am from Venezuela, but oh. now I am, I am living in Argentina now. In Argentina. Okay. Yes. How long have you been in Argentina? Um, I have been living here uh, since uh, 2008, um, maybe five years. I oh, wow. And did you move because you got a job in Argentina? Um, because my husband got uh, a job. Got a job. Yes. Okay, very good. But are now you... I, am, I am working here. Right. Too. Yes. And are you enjoying Argentina? Yes, it's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. I have not been there. I've got to go one day. Yeah. yeah well, it's beautiful. Welcome and to the class. Thank you. Okay, and we've got uh, Eric. Hello, Eric. Hello. Welcome to the class. Thank you. Where are you from? I'm from the Congo. From the Congo. Okay, so that's why we have Stop Killing the Congo. Yes. <laughs> what does right. this mean? What uh, do you mean by Stop Killing the Congo? It's a political matter. In, in fact, it's related to the ongoing war in the ah. eastern parts of Congo, which is um, supported by some uh, multinational uh, corporation. Right. That's why, yeah, that's why I want them to uh, let uh, our country alone. Yeah. Right. Okay. Very good. Welcome to the class. Thank you. And we have Alejandra. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Alejandra, are you there? Yes, sorry, I was mute. That's okay. Where are you from? Um, I'm from the Canary Island in Spain. Oh, okay. And am I saying your name okay? Yeah. Correct? Good. Okay. Very good. Well, welcome to the class. Excellent. Thank you. And Graciele? Yes. Am I saying it correctly? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. It's so hard to learn all these names and I never quite know how to pronounce them. Where are you from, Graciele? I'm from Brazil, but uh -huh. I live in the U.S. In the U.S. Where in the U.S.? Florida. Okay. Do you like Florida? Yes, I like it. Like uh, my <laughs> country. <laughs> no, yeah. no smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it gets really hot in the summer. Yes, I like Yeah. Is this your dog? Yes, this is my dog. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Megariah. Megariah, okay. Yeah. Great, well welcome to the class. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. And hi Manuel, welcome back. Hi Lorraine. <laughs> welcome, welcome. And we have Randy. Hello Randy. Hello teacher, how are you? I'm good. Welcome to the class. Thank and you. Where are you from, Randy? I'm from France. From France, okay. And we also have Federico with us again. Hi, Federico. Welcome. And, and Sophia. Hi, Sophia. Hi, teacher. Okay, good. Let's get started with the material. I have posted the worksheet in the Verbling chat, and I will share my screen share with you. There will be a blue screen that says diplomatic language. If you can't see it, let me know and I'll try and fix it. 
if everybody clicks on my icon, you should be able to see it uh, all the time. Sometimes it disappears. Okay. okay. So we're going to first of all um, define some words, and these are adjectives for describing attitudes. So we'll start with the first one. Sophia, can you read the word and then try to match it up to one of these definitions? Okay. okay. Tactful. Mm -hmm. Um, C. Yes. Can you read it, please? Read it out loud. Uh, yes. Uh, careful not to say or do anything that could upset or offend someone. Very good. Okay, excellent. Thank you. And Randy, you're next. The next word, please. Uh, direct. Mm -hmm. uh, F. Saying what you think without worrying about other people's opinions. Very good. Okay. And the next one is... I have to get to know all these names again. Maria. So, uh, Number three. Honest. Mm -hmm. honest. Um, telling the truth. Telling uh, the truth. Good. Excellent. And then we have uh, Manuel. Uh, sorry, uh, Lorraine. This yes. is my first, my, my second class. And okay. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't read uh, the full screen. Okay, you can't see the screen that uh, I have uh, on, the, on the screen share? Click on my icon and tell me if you can see it. Yes. Yeah. Is, is the four the four number four? Yes, words? please. Number four. Mhm. Mm Rude. Rude. Um, I don't know. Okay, we'll ask somebody for help. Anyone in the class? Do you have an idea of what rude might mean? Yes. What is it? Yes. Um, behind in offensive way, not polite. That's correct, yes. Okay. Behaving in an offensive way. Okay, that's being rude. Okay, good. And then it is your turn. Graciele? Number yes. five. Respectful. Uh, behave in socially correct way that show you are thinking about the another people thing. Mm, similar. Like eight. A can say A. Uh, respectful is actually it's very similar. Very, very similar. Or uh, I think I I think uh, or A O or or G. Yes. Show politeness and care turns <laughs> oh. Yes. Showing show showing polite politeness and care towards some someone who is consideration important. Yes, important. and it's the someone who's considered important here. When you show respect, often it's to people who are older than you, or your professors, or your doctor. It's mm -hmm. that's showing respect. Okay. Uh, good. And uh, Geraldine, number six, please. Okay. Polite. Mm, is a behaving in a socially correct way that shows you are thinking about other people's feelings. Exactly, yes. Good. Uh, Federico, number seven. There's, uh, I, I don't know the pronounce. The pronounce. Okay. Uh, persuasive. It's, 
Exactly, persuasive. Persuasive, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, H, uh, talking in a special way to make somebody want to do uh, something or believe in something you want them to believe in. Exactly, good. Very well done. Okay, and um, Eric, the next one, please. Uh, the next one is encouraging. Yes, encouraging. Encouraging. Ah, okay. Yes. Encouraging is um, making someone feel uh, more confident. E. Mm. No? I'm just looking here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Good. And uh, Alejandra, the last one, please. That's the hard one. <laughs> <laughs> Supportive, giving help. Yes. D. Good. Okay. Are there any questions about these adjectives? All right. We'll move along. So let's take a look at opposites of words. I have these because the uh, way to make them opposite, they're all different. But, uh, yeah, let's try the first one. And um, we'll go in the middle uh, with Gris Graciele. Tactful. What's the opposite, do you think, of tactful? Mm. Tactful? Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, uh, How would we make this word the opposite? We're going to use the same word, but we're going to put a prefix in front of it to make it the opposite. Mm -hmm. So if we had the word helpful, Helpful. Unhelpful is the opposite. Uh, helpful. I. Oh, in this case, I'm sorry. We're going. I'm to sorry. Put, uh, I. We're going to put a suffix on there. Tactless. Tactless. Uh, okay. Most of these have uh, prefixes. But tactful has a suffix, something put on the end which causes the word to become its opposite, tactless. Tactless. Yes. Okay. And um, I can't remember everybody's name here. So, Maria, what about direct? How do we make the um, direct opposite? Maria? Sorry. Uh, not direct. Not undirect. You're, you're close. In this in, case... Indirect. Yeah. Indirect. Yes, very good. Yes, indirect. My this is the crazy part of English. All the different little prefixes and suffixes. It's things I, different. I mean Good. Well done. Direct, but my pronunciation uh, okay. make you... <laughs> <laughs> you said okay. it right the second time. Yeah, it sounded good. Okay. okay. Sophia, what about honest? How do you do that? Uh, honest? Uh, dishonest? Uh, repeat, please. Honest uh, and... Dishonest. Dishonest, yes. Dishonest. Good. Um, Manuel? Su supportive. Unsupportive. Supportive. Unsupportive. Unsupportive. Good. Unsu unsupportive. Yes, unsupportive. So we have in, dis, and un all make the opposite when you put it on the beginning of the words. Okay. 
and you just have to learn them because it's very hard there is no real rule I can give you for these and a synonym for rude Does anybody know what a synonym is offensive okay okay impolite offensive both of them would be good yeah out of place. Impolite. Uh, impolite. Impolite. Mm -hmm. But what you said was correct too. The um, somebody else said offensive. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. And uh, Eric, you said something. What was it? Out of place. Out of place. Mm. Yes. No. Um, I wouldn't. Well, sometimes um, a comment that is out of place could be rude, but not necessarily. But okay. offensive and impolite, they work. Those are two good ones. Okay. Maybe hard. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> this is difficult. Okay. So say how you would try or try not to behave in each of the following situations using I'd try or try not to be plus one or more of the adjectives we just studied. Okay, so we had all those adjectives. If you have the worksheet, it's best to download that so that you can look at those adjectives again in order to do this exercise. Uh, so it's uh, I'll go with Geraldine. Yes. Number one, you are a secretary talking to an important customer. Okay, um, I try to be um, very polite and respectful. Yes, that, very good. Yes, polite and respectful would be really good things to be, especially with an important customer. Good, thank you. Federico, number two, your best friend is very unhappy at work. You think he or she should quit and find a new job. So how are you going to be? Uh, I, first of all, I think uh, honest and, uh, and uh, su supportive and um, Encouraging. Encouraging, good. Encouraging. Okay. All right, good. Very nice. Uh, Eric, an important customer calls you to complain about something. Okay. I try not to be rude. Good. And I try to be. Uh, Polite, respectful. Yes. Okay, that's it. Okay, good. All of those things would be good. Yes. Okay. And number four. And this is for uh, Alejandra. Mm -hmm. um, you order a washing machine to be delivered to your home. It never arrived. You visit the store to complain. Well, I will try to be direct. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the easy part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, and how else? Um, and tactful, maybe. <laughs> okay, possibly. You can also try not to be something. You would try not to be rude. And not to be rude. Yeah. Or you might try, did you say you would try to be tactful? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Anything else? No. Okay, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> Sophia, number five. Can you <laughs> read it and then um, tell me how you would try to be? One of your colleagues has to give his first presentation and is rather nervous. You have a lot of experience. 
Mm. Eh. Mm. Supportive. Yes, you need to be supportive. There are some other really good words. Mm, honest. Okay, honest would be good. When someone is nervous, what do you have to give them a lot of? Um, encouraging. Yes, yeah. You need to encourage them. You can do it. You're good at this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good. Uh, anything else? Or is Me? That good? Yeah. No, sorry. Okay. Let's go on to number six then. And this is for Randy. Read it, please, and then tell me how you'd try to be. You lose your company mobile phone. You have to tell your boss. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'll try to be honest. Okay. And, uh, and directly tell him the truth, not to be rude. Okay. And good. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. good. I think. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Did you say something? Yeah, uh, I think the people don't say number six. Uh. Yeah, we're doing number six right now. Okay. All right, so that's probably, yeah, that's probably good for number six. So we'll go on to number seven now, and this is for Maria. So I try to be uh, respectful, polite, and persuasive. Okay. So you're going to be respectful, and you're going to you're calling a potential customer, and you're trying to sell to them. What other things do you need to be persuasive? Persuasive, yes. You want to be persuasive and respectful and polite, but uh, above all, persuasive. Okay, good. All right, so let's continue on. Let's practice by putting in um, the correct word, the correct adjective for these sentences. So these are things that people say, and let's decide what, what the adjective is that best describes it. Uh, so we're on to Manuel. Number one, can you read the uh, sentences, please, and then tell me what word to put here? Don't worry. Everyone makes mistakes the first time. Encouraging. Okay, encouraging. Supportive. Yeah, one of those. Let's see what I've got here. Maybe both. Encouraging. Supportive. Good. I think that's all for that one. Uh, Graciela, number two. Number two. Yeah, read the sentences and then... Get lost. We don't need your help here. Ugh. Wow. <laughs> rude. Ouch. <laughs> That's very rude. Rude. Go. Terrible. <laughs> and there's another one too. What else? <laughs> uh, rude. Yeah, and there's another one. I've left room for another word here, so there's another one of these words that fits. What else? Rude and anybody else? Impolite. 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 Very impolite. impolite. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, Jarlin? Yes. Number three. Uh, we are prepared, prepared to offer you a 15% discount for the first month. Uh, it's very persuasive, I think. Okay. Maybe persuasive. I'm not sure. Fifteen percent discount for one month would really persuade me to do much, but <laughs> <laughs> I think they are trying to be persuasive. Okay, uh, good. Yes. <laughs> Federico, number four. Please have a seat, sir. 
Would you like a coffee while you wait? Mm. Um, very polite. Yes, polite. Respectful. Good. Okay. Those are the words that describe that one. Well done. Okay, Eric, number five. Uh, sorry, I think you should quit your job. It's clearly giving you too much stress. Um, honest. Possibly honest. Yeah. Um, encouraging. Uh, okay. And maybe su su supportive. Maybe. Supportive. Yeah. Okay. Let's see which ones I got here. Direct. Honest. Oops. Go back. Whoa! No, not that far back. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Rats. Okay. And honest. And I think also you're right. I think it's supportive. It should have been there. No room. Okay. So the next one uh, is for Alejandra. Number six. Unmute your microphone so we can hear yeah. you. Yes. Yeah, yes. Sorry. Hey, I can help you. I can't help you. I'm too bu uh, busy as someone else. Um, in rude, impolite, yeah, unsupportive. <laughs> yeah, all those things. Direct, <laughs> rude, impolite, unsupportive. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, there's no questions about there. All right. So, using diplomatic language, we're going to read and compare the following extracts from a meeting and comment on the difference in language and the difference in status between the two colleagues. Okay, so let's get some people to read here. Um, let's get Sophia. I want you to be A, and uh, beside her is forgotten. Ah, Randy. Yeah. So, Randy, can you be B and read this little dialogue, please? There what? is a problem. What problem? Well, the unit price you suggested is too high compared to our competitors' prices. 30 euros would be better. No, our production costs are very high, you know. But it will be more difficult to sell to our customers. You didn't read the market research report? According to the report, customers would be prepared to pay a slightly higher price since we offer a more durable product than other manufacturers. Can you email me that re re report? I I've lost my copy. I'm busy at the moment. My secretary should be able to help you out. Okay, good. Thank you. Now, there's a difference in language and also a difference in the status. So, uh, Maria, is A got higher status or does B have higher status? Which do you think? Sorry, I didn't understand the question. Okay, this is this is for Maria. Uh, okay. Okay. And it says here uh, in our um, beginning, it says there is a difference in the status between the two colleagues. So one might be the boss, and one might be the employee. Do you think A is the employee or the boss? Maria? A is the employer and employee. B is the boss. Okay, and B is the boss. All right, so we can tell from some of the language that B has higher status. So what things does he say that lets you know that he is probably higher in status? And this is a question for Manuel. Uh, why, why, oh, the difference in the status? Yeah, what, what is it in the language that B uses 
that lets you know he is the boss or uh, has maybe, higher status. Maybe instead instead the language, maybe is the fact that B has secretary. <laughs> yeah, he has a secretary. <laughs> yeah, the secretary that's, that's a, a good clue. <laughs> it's a good clue. Very good. Okay, that is a very good clue. He has a secretary. Also, I mean, he can say things like, I'm busy at the moment. Can you imagine uh, an employee saying that to his boss? His boss no, says, no. can you get me this report? No, I'm busy at the moment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that wouldn't be a good idea. Okay. So, what do you feel about this conversation? Is this, um, is this a nice, polite conversation? Mm, no. no. Okay, how does everybody feel about this? Is this kind of normal, the way it should be between a boss and his employee? No. Okay, so who who do you think is using language that is not so good, not so nice, not so diplomatic? The employee. <laughs> okay, the employee. What? Employee. what what does the employee say that seems kind of harsh? This is for anyone. An example. She suggested um, to change the price okay. of, the, of uh, the product. Okay. So the price is too high and gives an uh, idea of what would be better. Okay. Uh, so possibly. Anything else? What about the boss? Does he use some not-so-nice language? Anyone? Okay. We're going to go to the next um, dialogue. It's the same conversation, but done with slightly different language. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this time I'm going to have Graciela. Um, I want you to read for A, and Geraldine, um, oh, please read B. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Here we go. There seems to be a slink problem. What sort of problem? Well, it is seen it enterprise your suggest is a bit too high compared to our competition. The competition competitor price would thirty euros to better. Not really. Our production costs are pretty high, you know. But want it to be a bit more difficult to sell to our customers. It seems you didn't read the market research report. According to the report, customers would be prepared to pay a slightly higher price since we offer a more durable product than other manufacturers. Could, could you email me that the report? It's a prior. I've mis 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 oh. misplaced. misplaced. Misplaced my cop. I am, I'm afraid I'm a little busy at the moment. My secretary should be able to help you out. Okay, good. Thank you. Now, does this conversation sound different from the other one? Yeah. And if so, what makes it different? Anyone can answer. Uh, it's more, more polite because uh, the employee uh, use words like seems, uh, could, uh, words that are, that are more uh, I don't know, respectful or more okay. uh, that tactful. Yes, good. Okay, that's this very true. This language is formal. Um, can you repeat, Graciela, please? Uh, okay. This language is like formal. Like formal or not formal? Formal. It's formal? Yes. Actually, it's less formal. This is less formal in this case. And um, 
what um, Geraldine was saying is quite true. We have some softening words, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in uh, just a few minutes. Federico, did you have something you were going to say? Oh yes, uh, um, very very useful. Uh, there are a lot of words uh, that you can use uh, to make more polite uh, uh, this conversation. Uh, for example, I like uh, when uh, he says uh, there seems to be a slight problem instead of uh, right. there is a problem. Exactly, uh, yeah. Okay, so you guys are picking out all of that language that... Uh, let's do some underlining of all of the words that you can find that help to soften what's being said. Uh, so, Federico, in the first sentence, is there, are there any words that are softening the, what's being said? Which ones do you see? Uh, the first sentence, uh, uh, I see uh, slight before problem and uh, seems to be, and in, for example, in the second sentence, I okay. see... Uh, don't, go any, don't go into the second sentence, let's just oh, do the okay. first one first. Okay, so we have, there seems to be, that whole... Seems to be. Instead yeah. of, there is, exactly. there is a problem. We have there seems to be a problem, a slight problem. So it's not a big problem, just a little problem. So these words are softening things. That's good. Okay, Eric, what about in the next sentence? Are there any softening words here? Mm, I would say sort. Yeah, sort. What sort of problem? Yeah. Good. And Alejandra, what about in the next sentence? What do we have? Mm, it seems. Mm -hmm, it seems. Anything uh, else? You suggested, maybe? Uh, you suggested was there before. Ah, okay. Well, well mm, oh, it seems. Wouldn't, wouldn't. Thank yes, you. but there is something before that. We missed one. Can anybody see it? A bit too. Yeah, a bit. A bit, a bit too. A bit too high. Just a bit too high. Okay, and then wouldn't. Wouldn't 30 euros be better? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, that's exactly right. Sophia, what about the next sentence? Um, not really. Mm -hmm. Not really. Mm, pretty. Pretty. Yeah, that's a very strange use use of. Whoops, I missed it. I might have got these backwards, but it's a very strange way to use the word pretty, which usually means somebody looks beautiful. But in this case, it is just an adjective to say something is is more. It's higher. It's pretty high. Okay, that's good. And uh, is this, so yes, go ahead. Ask is this word um, formal or informal? No, this is very informal. Pretty is very informal. You would not use um, pretty in any kind of formal document, and it's mostly okay. just used in speech. In speech. Yes. Even even with your boss. Yes, you could use it with your boss. Okay. Because um, you're using it to uh, to describe products and things like that, or prices, or yeah, it it can be used. Okay. So that one's correct. And uh, then it's Maria. Next, I've done the this one. It won't. Okay. It seems. So. Yeah, we're doing this next one. Oh, okay, you're going to do this one? Okay, it seems. That's correct. Okay. Anything else in there? Would be. Would be. Would be. Customers would be. Would be prepared. Okay, um, I think, doesn't it say the same thing in the other one? Mm -hmm. Would be. Uh, yeah. Okay. Slightly. 
Yeah, slightly. Oops, slightly I didn't put that one. But a slightly higher price is correct as well. Nice. Okay. And um, okay, good. Uh, the next one's I think Randy. I've done. Could you email me that report? What else in there? It uh, it appears. Mm -hmm. It appears. I mean, it appears. Yeah. And the next one is. Next one is, I'm afraid I'm a little mm. busy. No, there's still one in this sentence. I've misplaced. I've, I've misplaced. misplaced my copy. Yeah, my copy. Uh, in the other yeah. one, it says, I lost my copy. Ah, and okay. lost, lost is very final. Like, I've lost it. It's gone, you know. Yeah. But if I've misplaced it, well, it might be somewhere on my desk underneath some other papers. It's misplaced. I can't find it right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's it's just a softer thing to say. I've misplaced it. Misplaced. Okay. Okay, okay. Graciela. Uh, I'm afraid. One. Yes, I'm afraid. And again, a strange use of the word um, because you're not scared. It's just a, a polite way of expressing regret. I'm afraid. And what else in this sentence? I'm a little busy. A little busy. A Just little. A little. <laughs> okay, good. So, and my secretary should be able to help you out, which is the same. Okay, so you will need the uh, worksheet in order to do this because I can't go back and forth between the two slides. When we want to be careful not to upset or offend someone, or to be more persuasive, special, tactful, or diplomatic language is often used to soften what we want to say. Underline the words, phrases, and structures that are used in the second dialogue to soften the language. We just did that. Now let's put them in the um, columns. We have softening phrases, softening adjectives and adverbs, a negative question and a word change. So sometimes instead of making a statement, it's better to use a negative question, and some of them are in the dialogue. So the first thing, um, oh, maybe we are going to have to go back and forth somehow here. So there seems to be, what would we call this? What, where, where will this go in the uh, column? Softening phrases. Okay, that's a softening phrase. And then there's slight. Okay. And the slight? What's this? Softening adjectives or adverbs. Okay, good. All right, so then after that we have sort of. Federico? Where does it go? Oh, that's the trouble. Um, the second column, um, softing uh, adjectives and phrases. Maybe it's actually a phrase. Sort of is a phrase, so it goes in oh, the first okay. part. Sort, sort of. of. Okay. Yeah. Sort of. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. All right. And the next one. This is awkward. Going back and forth. Whoops. We have seams. I think I'll just put them in here, otherwise we'll be forever doing these. Then we have a bit. Wouldn't it be better? That's the negative question. Wouldn't it be better instead of saying it's, it's overpriced? <laughs> Wouldn't it be better to make it a lower price? Okay. And no, not change to not really. No is so final. No. If you say not really, it's not so final as no, so it's a little easier to take for the other person hearing it. And very pretty. Either one. You can I don't think very is a bad thing to say, but uh, you could use either one. Uh, won't it be what was that uh, phrase? Can somebody read it? 
the phrase? Won't it be something customers? In the text. Mm -hmm. mm, but won't it be a bit more difficult no, to sell our customers? Yes, that's the one. OK, again, the negative question. Good. Uh, and again, we have the softening adjective. Seems is very commonly used for lots of things. And appears. Lost. That's the one I already described. It's better to say you misplaced it. Don't say you lost it. <laughs> mm. OK. So we're going to practice by trying to say these things in a more diplomatic way. So let's start with Alejandra. Number one, say the sentence the way it is. Uh, no, you know what? I think I'll give you some time to uh, think of the wording. So Alejandra, you have sentence number one. So mm -hmm. you can start right now thinking about what you will say. Write it down if you want to. OK, and I'll come back to you in a minute. Uh, number two is going to go to Eric. OK, number three, Federico. Number four, uh, four, oh, I'll have to look. Gerilyn, sorry, I'm still learning okay. names. <laughs> <laughs> I just get the pictures. I'm trying to remember names. Okay. Uh, and uh, five, Graciela. And okay. six, Maria. And seven, I think that's Randy. And eight, Sophia. OK. So I'll give you two minutes to come up with how you're going to say it. Okay. When you're ready, if you could just type ready in verbling chat so I know how many of you are finished. Okay. I think most of you are ready, so we'll we'll start. So uh, Alejandra, uh, mm -hmm. you have number one. So read what's there, and then tell me what you have changed it to. Can you leave him a message? Okay. I will say, could you leave him a message? Okay, good. So when you say can, it's it's a more um, a solid word could gives you more of uh, gives the listener more of a choice okay yeah. so good yes you would use the word could instead yeah. of can well done okay Eric um, I would say I wouldn't be able to finish the report today I'm afraid um, a little bit busy. Okay. I you don't need to change the won't to wouldn't. Uh, just say I won't be able to finish. Uh, I would first mm -hmm. of all put um, I'm sorry at the beginning of that. Okay. I'm sorry I won't be able to finish the report today. I'm afraid I'm a little bit busy. Okay. Something like that. Oh. Eric is going, going, gone. <laughs> okay. So does that make sense? Okay, Federico, number three. Uh, yeah, yes, it is. Okay, good. 
Okay. The price is too high for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it seems the price is a bit too high for us. Oh, very good. It seems the price is a bit too high for us. Nicely said. Very diplomatic. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, and Geraldine, mm, yes. yours? Mm, it seems I'm going to be a little late. Okay. It seems I'm going to be a little late. All right. I'll accept that. <laughs> Good. Well done. Uh, Graciela? Mr. Jones, uh, now I ha I'm occupied. I will call back later. Okay, so um, you can't say I because you're talking to somebody else. So you need the third person, the you. You you can call back later, or so Mr. Johnson is at lunch. Call back later. That is very abrupt. All right. So you're going to change this call back later into a question. What could you say? Uh, May, can you back later? Okay, close. Could you uh, call? Could. Yeah, could you call back later? Could you call back later? Okay, so if I were the secretary and I answered the phone and they say, could I speak to Mr. Johnson, please? I'd say, I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson is at lunch. Could you call back later? All right. Okay. I can use may. I'm sorry, could you repeat your question? Uh, I can change could for may. May call back later? No, no, may will not work in that. May uh, you use with I. May I call back later. Ah, okay. But could you call back later? Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Super. Maria, number six. It seems like you couldn't understand my idea. Okay. Um, I don't think you can use couldn't uh, to replace don't. There isn't anything wrong with saying don't. Okay. All right, but I think you might not understand. Um, hmm. You don't understand my it idea. It seems like you yes. don't understand my idea. Yeah, that's good. It seems like you don't Are understand. Is it possible, possible to understand my idea? No. Or you could maybe say, I think. Uh, it's possible that you have misunderstood my idea. Yes, I'll write that it down. Good. Okay. So it's a possibility here. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Randy, you're next. Number seven. If we implement this idea, we will have a problem. Mm. Wouldn't it better wouldn't it be better to come up with another one? Mm. Over, otherwise we will have a slight problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, if we implement this idea, we will have a problem. Um, I think you can keep the if we implement this idea. If we implement this idea, uh, we will have a slight problem. Okay, or there is a possibility that we might have a slight problem. Ah, That's okay. really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll write that one down too. Okay. 
Okay. There is a possibility that we might have a slight problem. Okay. And uh, Sophia, the last one. Uh, could I speak to the manager, please? There seems to be a problem. Okay. Now, when something is urgent, uh, sometimes to convey the urgency, you need to keep it short. And I think you should try to keep it's urgent because that is important. But the part of, can I speak to the manager, please, needs to change. And I think you did it right. You switched it from can to could. Could I speak to the manager, please? It's urgent. OK. Does that make uh, sense? Le, yes, it does. OK. Sorry, a question? Did yes, you? please. Um, uh, what, what is the difference uh, if we use uh, could I speak or may I speak? Um, you could use may I. It's okay. very formal. To use may I is very formal. Okay. May I. Yeah. So okay. what you're asking for there is permission. May I speak to him, which is a correct thing. Could I speak to him is asking if there is the possibility of doing so. Okay, okay. because it's, it's uh, uh, not asking for permission. It's asking about the availability of the manager. Okay. Because you can't speak to him at all if he isn't in. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay. All right, good. Um, we have one more minute. Does anybody have any questions about any of this? Did I get everybody? Everyone said their, their sentence? Okay, good. So mm -hmm. any, any questions, any comments about uh, diplomatic language? No one? No. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, good. Yes, okay, very quickly now. <laughs> uh, yes, um, I want to ask you if we can ask uh, Telling um, instead, uh, you can, can you put the screen, the text? So, yes. So mm -hmm. you, you yes. Um, maybe. Okay. okay. Um, in number five. Yes. Uh, call back later. Mm -hmm. Instead of uh, could you call back later? Can you say would you care to s no? Uh, yeah, would you care to call later? To call back later, or not? Um, you could say that. It, it is, would not be a common thing to say, but it is polite. Um, yeah, would you care to call back later? Hmm. You could ask that question, and it is, it is nice and polite. You could say that. There's nothing okay. wrong with that. Okay. Okay? Okay. Great. Anyway, um, well, I have to go now, but thank you, everyone, for uh, joining me for this lesson. I hope that it was helpful for you, and hopefully I'll see you again in another lesson. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.